Hey, it's just me. Daniel and I have so enjoyed making videos lately for you. I really just enjoy sharing from our hearts together with you, but today it's just me. Today's video is sponsored by Ladder. Ladder is a sports nutrition brand with workout supplements for daily use. I use some of the different things, Daniel uses some of the different things, and you might enjoy them as well, so I'm going to show them to you in just a moment. Today, we are talking about emotional chastity. This is a question that I get all the time, so I want this to live on my channel. I did an Instagram Live about it. How many of y'all have been around since Instagram Lives? I went live every single week really before Instagram Live was really a thing. When the boys came into our lives, that changed a lot. So I'm thinking about bringing it back in the new year. Would you want me to bring back Instagram Lives to see if I would be able to set a time every week to do that? Maybe when the boys are napping, holler if you'd want me to do that. But today, emotional chastity. And this is a really silly term coined by who knows who? I do not know who made up this term, but it's one that's thrown around a lot. And so many people ask me, Emily, what is that? Like, what does it even mean? How do I practice it in my life? So today I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways that you can implement this into your life and set boundaries for your own emotions and your own heart and your own life for your own good and for your own holiness in your walk of faith. What emotional chastity ultimately is, is just a term for setting boundaries with like in our emotions, in our relationships, and in our friendships. Many times emotional chastity is used as a term, like when you have a guy friend, right? And I want to live emotional chastity. How do I set boundaries with my emotions? How do I set boundaries with how much I am investing into this friendship with this guy who I'm not dating? etc. Ultimately, this isn't about the virtue of chastity, right? The virtue of chastity is so much more than sexual, but chastity looks at the like the purity of my heart um, and the purity of my mind and the purity of my life and the purity of my body. But ultimately, emotion like this is setting, setting those boundaries with emotions as well as not getting carried away. It's hard as a woman <laughs> to not get carried away, especially when there's a really attractive guy and it's really easy to just get carried away. And so Emotional chastity, right? This term, which I don't love, um, can like implementing that can really help us guard our hearts and protect our hearts as we are called to. The other important thing is that when people talk about emotional chastity, it's often like geared toward women when the reality is that this is something that both men and women can and should practice is having these emotional boundaries in our friendships with one another, having holy friendships as guys and girls and practicing that for guarding our hearts in our own lives. So I have four ways that I want to share with you to practice this in your life. But before that, a word from our sponsors today. Check this out. So today's video is sponsored by Ladder. It's a sports nutrition company with awesome supplements. Daniel and I use a couple of different ones for different things. We love having a healthy lifestyle as part of our life. We've shared about that before. It's an important part of our life. So I like the Ladder greens. It's really hard, especially cooking for the whole family, to get all the nutrients we need, I need, in order to live a healthy life. So the greens are super helpful. I mean, the list is long of amazing things that you're getting. Spinach leaf, matcha tea leaf, uh, beetroot extract, broccoli seed extract, so many different healthy aspects to the greens. It's super easy. It's just one scoop of greens, eight to 12 fluid ounces of water, and you can have that every day. I've really been enjoying that. What about you? Ones I predominantly use is just the uh, the way that they have after every one of the workouts, just for recovery, and then during my workouts, the hydration. So, as Emily said, she wanted me to brag, so I will. Last Saturday, I did the thousand pound challenge, which is something that, you know you guys can look up in weightlifting stuff like that. But these were two weights. of the supplements that I used to get to that goal. So again, the whey protein after every workout, and then during my workouts, I would do the hydration one and. I got there and I made it and I hit a thousand pounds and more even so. First of all, yeah. congratulations. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out. Daniel works but, so hard at that and I yeah. love when people like set fitness goals and achieve them. It's quite cool. Yeah. Well, it took me a little over a year to get there though. So it's not like one, two, three. I didn't say it was yeah. easy. I said yeah, it's exactly. cool when people <laughs> set goals whether that's a year or two years out and you achieve that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and so again, and this was great. I mean, this was good just for recovery, the way, and then during the workouts, the hydration stuff. Whatever kind of workout you're doing, supplements help maximize the effort and the energy that you're putting into those workouts, and so I highly 
Right. And the ones that you're, them. and what you're getting out of the workout, yeah. of course, right? So. So my code for twenty percent off the entire store is M Wills. How great of a code is that? Huh. Very appropriate. E M W I L S S. And these could be for you. They might be for your sister. Your mom might really be into whey protein, or your boyfriend, or your husband. Tell them to check out the store. Twenty percent off is an awesome discount using my code. So I'm going to leave the link down below. Thanks to the Ladder for sponsoring today's video. Now back to what we were talking about before. So number one, one of the most helpful things you can do for yourself, which I got tangled up in when I was single, is that you don't start praying about whether or not God wants you to date a guy if you have never like known how he feels about you or he's asked you on a date. So often I talk to women and I, you know, I journey with women all the time. She said, oh, I've been praying for weeks about whether or not uh, God wants me to go on a date with this guy or to date this guy only to come to find out that he's already dating someone else. And you think how silly of me to be praying like, Lord, do you want me to date this guy? Do you want me to date this guy? Do you want me to date this guy? when he has never asked me on a date or he never said like, I have feelings for you and I would love to get to know you more. The problem is that when we like start praying about that, God, do you want me to date this guy when I have no idea how he feels or what his life looks like? We can start to become obsessive, right? And believe me, I, before I was married a long time ago, I have lived this. I think it's something so many women live is this, these prayers can become obsessive and we it's like the only thing that we pray about. It's the only thing that we think about and the intensity of what we imagine might be happening with us and this guy or the intensity of our feelings might really escalate when it's not right there the, the guy either has a girlfriend or there's nothing there or there might be something there but i am not like helping myself to have healthy emotional boundaries by praying about this thing that like it's a huge question mark so do you see how that like emotional chastity right is setting those boundaries to say I'm not going to pray about whether or not God wants me to date this guy unless he asks me on a date or expresses that he has feelings for me. The second thing is to call it what it is. If it's a friendship, call it a friendship. This is so important. The language that we use is so important to help us guard our hearts in relationships. It's easy to get your friends excited about your crush and to get excited together about this guy that you like or this guy that you went on a date with or this guy you sit next to in class. And like you get out of class and your friend's like, did you sit next to your boyfriend today? Like joking, lighthearted, of course. I'm not saying don't have any fun in life, you know me. But asking your friend like, oh, did you sit next to your boyfriend today is not helpful because he's not her boyfriend. Language is so important because when we use language like, oh, did you sit next to your boyfriend? We get carried away. And this is all about helping us use clear minds and clear hearts to not get carried away emotionally because our, our hopes can get high, right? You say, oh, did you sit next to your boyfriend today? And the, your friend gets these hopes and these hopes and these hopes in her heart. And that can lead to crashing and burning if it doesn't turn in, into anything or you find out that he's engaged or married or whatever it is that that leads to greater crashing and burning when I am not realistic about what is actually happening. Calling things what they are is really important for healthy emotional boundaries in our own hearts and our own minds. Number three is pretty obvious. Don't stalk him on social media all day long. If you are looking at what he's doing, if you are looking at his posts, if you're constantly checking if he's updating, you are not setting healthy emotional boundaries for yourself because you are becoming obsessed with his life and becoming obsessed with what he's doing. And that's not healthy. That's not healthy for anyone to be obsessed with what somebody else is doing. If you have problems with this, you need to recognize this to say, yeah, maybe I am like obsessively looking at what he's doing all day long. And yeah, this isn't healthy for me emotionally and I need to take a step back and look at, okay, how can I change this? How can I fix this? How can I guard my heart more in this situation? How can I, you know, set healthier emotional boundaries for myself to help my heart along the way? What do I need to change in my social media use, whatever platform that is in order to help my emotional boundaries? with this friendship with this guy, with this crush that I have, whoever he is. That one's pretty self-explanatory, but it takes a little like inner lookings at your heart. Like how often are you checking and what are you checking? And are you looking at his stories again and again and again, really taking that inventory honestly in your own heart and in your own life. Number four, if you do find yourself getting carried away, which as I said, is a totally normal thing, offer up a prayer. If you're a woman of faith, you say, God, help me to invest properly in this friendship and be present to the here and now. Another one, God, help me to set healthy emotional boundaries for myself. 
a very short and simple prayer, when you find yourself getting caught up or getting carried away, use short and simple prayers like that to bring yourself back to reality, to bring yourself back to the present, to bring yourself back to that work that each of us has to do in order to take care of our own hearts, which you know I am in the business of helping you do, helping your own heart and in your own life. God, help me to invest properly in this friendship and pour your heart you pour your heart out to the lord you can say lord this man is very attractive and i love hanging out with him and i love spending time with him and i don't know what's going on between us but really i i offer it to you right whatever it is light the way guide the way guide me toward your will make it a prayer so often we get just all tangled up in this and that in our emotions and we forget let me talk to God about this, right? I'm going to talk to the Lord about what's going on and just ask for his guidance and ask for his hand in it and ask him if it's not the right thing or this is going to lead me down a path he doesn't want me to go to cut that part of my life out or cut that relationship out of my life or close that door. Pray about everything. Pray without ceasing about every single aspect of your life. God cares about every aspect of your life, every single one. He loves to hear from you. So those are four things to help us keep a healthy perspective on our emotions. I've told you a thousand times, emotions are a healthy thing. It's healthy to have emotions, but as women and as men too, as human beings, it's important to figure out in our own hearts and our own lives. Some of us are more sensitive than others. Some of us are controlled by emotions more easily, but it's so important for each person to understand how to not let their emotions control our lives and control our decisions to think with clear heads and clear hearts. And those are four ways that I hope will be helpful for you in doing that. Let me know if this is applicable for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. That's all for today. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.